All right, guys, it's Clinton with CNC Equipment. Today I was going to show you uh, how to install a PTO on a uh, 5 ton 900 series military truck. We've got our PTO laid out here. So, this PTO we actually sell. We got a lot of people asking. They're kind of a pain to install. It's real tight under the frame rails. I'm going to show you. Um, this PTO is going to fit any of the uh, 5 tons with the Allison automatics. It doesn't matter whether it's a uh, like a, a straight 923 it's an a1 or a2 series it doesn't matter which engine they have in it but any year say 923 925s 927s 936s 931s 32s any of those five tons with the allison automatic it doesn't matter if they have the 8.3 cummins or the 855 like this one does a couple different things when we're installing them i'll show you between the two engines but this is a pto we sell it's actually um a cable operated PTO there's a push pull cable for it. it's actually the only kind you can get to fit in these trucks it's real tight up there in the frame rails as I'll show you here in a bit but this kit comes with pretty much everything you need um, gaskets hoses studs they've got uh, thread sealing on them so they don't leak um, brackets for your push pull cable and everything else the PTO we sell it is a remote mount there's no way to get a direct mount PTO where you can bolt the pump straight on it um just not enough room up there and you guys will see here in a little bit but our ptos come have an inch and a quarter shaft on them and have a 5 16 um, key on them the first thing you want to do to save yourself a lot of trouble and i'll show you once we get up there you want to pull this um, top right bolt out and the reason is that bolt's hard to get to up under there but this um, cable mount bracket's actually going to get installed there after it's in so i like to take this bolt out first um, so it's out of the way it's easy to get to now next thing you want to take off is get this arm out of your way we'll reinstall it later after we get it back in the truck again we're hurting for room trying to get this thing in there so and the other two things you want to do we'll want to install this keyway now it's a little easier to do it now set up in the truck and they give you a little eighth inch pipe plug here you notice we've got a hole on each side of this so what that is, that's actually a lube hole and it comes with this oil line here. So that sends um, lube oil into this PTO and actually lubricates that here. So you've got an option to do it from either side here. So this, once we put this PTO in, you will not be able to get to this hole here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this eighth inch pipe plug on the right hand side of this PTO as we're looking at it. Because once it goes up, up in the truck, you can't get access to that bolt. So save you guys a lot of trouble doing that and then the lube line after we get it installed we'll go here we'll actually um drill and tap on the cooler lines i'll show you on that but we're going to get this um pipe plug tightened up we'll get that keyway in there and then we'll get the truck lifted up and uh we'll show you how it goes on all right we got the truck lifted up here we're on the back side of the transmission on the right side up here you guys can see that little plate up there. That's actually our PTO access. You see that notch in the frame there? That's uh, actually notch cut out from the factory for the PTO. So what we're gonna do on uh, this motor truck has 855 Cummins in it. So there's two variations of motors. You got an 855 with an 8.3 Cummins. So on the 855s, you have to remove this dipstick. And when you do that, you have to drain all the oil out of transmission. On the 8.3 or the A2 series trucks, you do not have to move that dipstick because it goes up and around so you don't have to drain oil out but i mean this one's an 855 we're gonna um first thing we'll do undo this dipstick i think it's inch and a sixteenth and there's two uh or one three quarter inch bolt way up there that holds a dipstick dipstick tube we'll get it out of the way and then we'll pull this uh transmission cooler line off and get it out of the way and then we'll uh we'll probably have to reroute this one because it's uh, in our way, we'll get it up over the top or something there. So we're going to get the oil drained out of it. All right, we got the uh, oil drained out of the pan. Actually, just put the dipstick tube on it, and so it's not dripping. Put it back in there. We got uh, this lower cooler line off. We got the other one tied out of the way. I did loosen this cooler fitting. We'll go ahead and take it out of the way, and I'll show you on that later. Um. We actually got to drill and tap that for the lube line. We'll drill a hole here in the end and tap it. So 
So I already got most of the bolts out of the PTO here, PTO cover. I'm gonna take this last one out. They are 9 16. Get that to pop off. There's the cover. If you guys can see in there. There's the PTO gear right there we're looking for. So we're gonna get uh, get the surface cleaned up, get that gasket off there. And then the next thing we'll do, this clearance is real tight and you can't get the PTO in there. So what we do, um, this is what everybody has problems with. They can't get the PTO slid up in there. So what we do, we'll actually put a little port of power here and jack the rear of this transmission over to give us enough room to get in there. Sometimes if this bolt right here is sticking out too far, you've got to take it out. But um, there is a couple studs that go in there. I'll get those screwed in and I'll show you, show you guys where they go. All right, so on these uh, lower two bolts on the PTO, you can only get a stud in there, so. I've already got one in the transmission. The coarse threads with the sealant go in them, go in the transmission first. So I like to double nut up the, this side and I'll just run them in. You gotta go the right way, it helps first. And we'll run them in. So my nut come off. Didn't have it on there far enough. I'll try that again. All right, we'll just do that and we'll back those two nuts off. And then, uh, you gonna take those off, Randy? Yeah. And then what we'll do, in the book they tell you how to, um, there's different thickness gaskets here. So in the book they'll tell you how to um, check the backlash and stuff. It's just a generic, um, book overlay book of installing on anything but i put like 40 of these on and we found out after we've done two or three of them measuring them we always use the thickest gasket combined with the thinnest gasket and it always gets our clearance right so we'll get the uh thickest one here and the thinnest one because what happens if you don't get these um you get the clearance too tight on them these gears will actually wind there'll not be enough clearance in there for backlash so what I'll do is go ahead and put the gaskets on uh, on these studs up here. I got my surface all cleaned up. So the rest of the holes I'll use bolts and stuff too. Um, and that's another thing. You definitely want to do this to these copper washers. Those are your sealing washers and I actually have these lock tabs on. So the lock tab is going to go on first and then your copper ceiling washer. You notice this one's super long and you definitely gotta have this one in here before you slide that PTO up in the frame or if not, there's no possible way to get that in there. So I got to save you guys a little trouble on that. Um, the rest of them we can get in after the fact. So we're gonna get, uh, we got our port of power here. We're gonna get it set up here and uh, in between here and we'll jack it over. We'll show you that here. All right, we got a little mini porta power ram in there. Actually, using a nut for a spacer. Um, Randy's got the uh, porta power there. Um, he's gonna go ahead. Go ahead, Randy. We're gonna jack this over. Probably about. You don't want to go too far. We are pushing on an aluminum case, but we'll go. I think we're about there. We're gonna go about a three quarters of an inch or so. What we're doing, we're just basically pushing that tranny over in the rubber mounts up there. So. You don't want to go too hard, too far and break something. We're going to try that about right there. I'll get the PTO slid up here and we'll see if it uh, fits. All right, one other thing I like to do is actually slide this gear over this way. If you got it over here, it's going to try to line up on the gear in the transmission. Um, and then it's a lot harder to get in. So we'll put that big gear in the middle. Because actually when you engage it, it slides over and meshes with the big gear. So you put that in the middle, it's going to save you a lot of time. I'm gonna set the camera up here. Hopefully you guys can see. We'll try to get this bollard in. I 
Andy, I think you're gonna have to go a little bit farther. If you can. There she went. Okay. You guys can see how tight that was. All right, we're gonna get the uh, rest of the bolts in. These, you can only start a little bit at a time each side and kind of walk it in, because if you push it all the way in like I got it now, the nut will not fit in there. So you gotta kind of pull it out about like that. Get both the nuts started and kind of walk it in. Save yourself a little trouble, but we're gonna get the uh, other top three bolts in. You can see this long one I was talking about. You definitely gotta put it in first. There's no way to get that thing in there, what's in there. But having this port of power in here saves you a bunch of time because there's no possible way that dude will fit in there without that. It makes it a lot easier. So we're gonna get the other bolts in there. Um, one other thing I like to do too before I take the port of power out, I actually like to put this uh, arm on and the bolt that goes back through it. It just gives us some extra room while we got it spread back because once we let off that that clearance is going to get really tight in there so we'll get the bolts in that and then we'll be back all right guys we're up here in the truck now we're actually going through the floorboard um now on this truck has an 855 cummins as i said now the trucks with the 8.3 cummins this whole there's actually no hole in the floorboard on those. The whole transmission and motor is slid up farther forward, so you can actually get to it from outside of the truck and through the fender well and stuff. But on these 855s, being it's a longer motor, everything sits back farther. So you guys can see down in there, we got the PTO in. I went ahead and put that arm on. Um, remember, I, I took it off there to begin with to give us more clearance getting in. And uh, now we took this top bolt out. Now you can do that. You could have took the top bolt out now, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in here and put this bracket on. And keep in mind we still have the porter power between the transmission and the frame rail, so it's giving us a little more room. I'm going to have Randy take it out here in a second, and you'll see how tight it gets. I got the arm on there got it set so we got travel both ways tightened up hey randy you ready to let that port of power off yes sir go ahead yep you guys watch this clearance right there and see how tight that gets and you can't put that arm on now you can't get it off without pushing that back over it's a tight fit that's why we have to use a cable operated pto airship pto will not fit because they have a bigger head on them there and there's just no clearance for them so that's the reason we have to use cable cable shift ptos but got the tabs bent over on, on the bolts up here and i do a couple on the bottom next thing we'll do is probably drill and tap that 90 degree um trans cooler line all right i want to show you this fitting here um i drilled and tapped it actually i tapped it on the wrong side you think after about 40 of these i would have done it the right way but anyway i usually drill and tap them this way for some reason i got detained and drilled it this way we actually drilled it with a uh, put a quarter inch uh, mpt pipe tap in there i think it takes a 7 16 drill bit and we tapped it out with a quarter inch pipe thread so anyway i put a street l90 on there and got our uh, fitting in there used thread tape on both those so this hose that comes in a kit one end uh, has eighth inch pipe threads on it needs thread tape on there and it's going to go up in there throw it in first and then the other end will uh, go right on this fitting and that's going to supply low pressure oil to lube up those gears inside there so we're going to get this um, line on here um, then i'm probably going to put the dipstick tube and stuff back in there and then about the only thing we got left on this uh, pto is to hook the cable up all right got the lube line all hooked up um, I gotta tighten that fitting up yet. Did use a P clamp up there to uh, 
keep the hose from opening anything. We're actually going to put a uh, dump pump on there, hydraulic pump. This is actually a dump truck, so I'm just going to go ahead and do all that. The only thing we lack on the PTO that would come in this kit is hooking the cable up. Um, I got a little console we'll, we'll put up here and hook that cable up, but got the uh, cooler lines all hooked back up, dip stick back in, bolt in it, and the lube line. I just got to tighten that one fitting. And then uh, the cable's next up there, and that concludes installation of the PTO. I will at the end of this video just show you uh, after I get the pump and everything on, we're going to put a dry shaft through here and mount a pump up right in here. So that's why I've got this line kind of looped around here and got that P clamp on it to hold it out of the way. I'll get all that on there and we'll be back. All right, back in the truck here. I got this console we made. Um, we don't we sell these separately they don't come with the PTO kit but we've got the PTO cable that come with the kit I showed you earlier um, so I've got it routed down through underneath the PTO here so what we got to do now is actually um, cut the cable um, to the length it just comes extra long so what I'll do is pull that up so when we cut the sheathing and everything we don't cut uh, cut the wire sticking out here so I'm gonna make me a mark and get that cut Alright, so I cut this cable off, um, like I said I had the handle pulled out, so that wire was pulled back. Um, I cut a little, I don't know if you guys can see that, I cut the sheeting off there, and the reason is this clamp goes around here to hold this on, and it makes a little place for the bolt to go down through and stay on, so I'm going to get that fastened on here, and then we'll attach the end of the cable down to the uh, control arm of the PTO. All right, we got the cable, and I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a um, set screw on there, um, so you can adjust your cable. So basically, when your arm's all the way back towards the back of the truck, your handle needs to be all the way down here. So when you pull up on the handle, that's going to engage your PTO. So um, that's about all there is to this setup. I'll show you guys down underneath. Um, we are putting a hydraulic pump and drive shaft on so I'll show you that none of that stuff comes to that kit like I say this is just the installation on the PTO only so all right we got the PTO all installed and wrapped up I was going to show you um we got a dump truck here so we got a uh, hydraulic dump pump on there and a remote uh, drive shaft there these are parts we sell also if you guys are needing a drive shaft kit or pump we can get uh, we keep these pumps in stock we can get uh, other pumps too so you guys can take a look at that we got the lube ho hose all routed there so you guys need uh, a PTO I'll put the link in the description uh, for the PTO for these trucks so and I'll also put the phone number and stuff there too so if you guys want to give us a call if you need any other parts um, we keep uh, tanks and all that stuff in stock too if you're trying to build a dump truck or we got some different options there for you too so be sure to like the uh like the video and comment if you guys got any questions we'll be happy to answer